Welcome back, movie fans, to another episode of Hollow Victories, where the movies have literally made us sick. <laughs> I'm your host, Matt Presents, joined as always by my airborne co host. Hello, my name is Carr. That's a Garn47 reference. I don't know if anyone knows what the fuck that is, but. I, it can't always be a reference to the movie we're talking about. This, these two didn't give me a lot to work. I mean, a car and plane. Sure, sure. You know, it still works. Sure. And today we're talking about the the matchup of the Pixar spinoffs. It's planes versus Lightyear. We have been poking Disney with a stick a lot lately. Uh, I, I <laughs> it's, think it's, a, it's, it's been pretty, pretty warranted considering like I mean we both watched this on Disney plus Disney's allowed to murder us we might want to be a little careful <laughs> I, I never agreed to any of the like terms of service that's yeah I mean okay so the one I'm using right now isn't mine's but I do believe I signed up for it like years ago to watch Simpsons so yeah no I, I'm on their list they're allowed to kill me they might they might kill me to send a message yeah no, it it would make sense. I'll have to replace you with Chris. I I am not feeling suicidal. I just want to put that out there right now, and we'll move on. All right. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Do you want to introduce planes? <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Planes is a 2013 movie directed by Clay Hall. Although I doubt that they had much input on the project whatsoever. The movie is about a crop duster airplane named Dusty who wants to be a racer. Matt, what did you think of this movie? I don't think I need to give more context than that. I don't, like, I, you get what the entire film is based on me saying that alone. I, this feels like, I, I said this to you, this feels like a, a, a parody or like a knockoff of Cars. Like, you would see this in, like, like The Simpsons. They would be like, oh, yeah, you know, Pixar's new movie, and it's planes, and it's a plane who wants to, it's a crop duster who wants to be a racer. And there's the old crop duster, and he's like, a crop duster who wants to be a racer? Why I never? Yeah. Like, it's so cliche. Like, it is so cliche. It's, it's a nothing movie. I don't think that there's, like, I, I, I don't think there's ever been a time where we watched something with Mitzi where they shat on it just as much, <laughs> if not more, than we did. <laughs> um, yeah, no, Mi Mitzi hated this one. <laughs> it, it's it's just nothing. It's it's fucking nothing. The, not, the, pa the film's pacing is terrible. The characters are terrible. It's really boring. Um, I guess in terms of animation, you can, you know, you can do worse. But, I mean, it's also not that... A motive. I was I was actually watching fucking Doug Walker's Disney Sember after we watched it, and he brought up some. I'm kind of borrowing from his review here, but he he pointed out he even where even though he doesn't like cars, which I'm not too big on cars either, they do have movements. Like the cars are able to act like cartoon characters. You know, they might lift up one of their wheels, or their expressions do always tell you how they're feeling. With planes, they don't they don't move like cartoon characters. They just move like planes. So you're just watching these objects float in the air, like their pieces don't move at all. You know, there's a scene where he goes into the ocean and makes it to the top, and it's like, is he swimming? I can't, or does he float? I can't tell. It, it's bad. At, yeah. It's bad at like the most basic things. Like it, it doesn't communicate things well. It's uh, I, I genuinely I, I feel I, I know like it's kind of. It might seem a little harsh to go off on, like, a kid's movie like this. I think it's one of the worst movies I've ever, I ever saw. And I'm going to bring up another point from fucking Doug's review, because it's true, where he said, well, isn't it kind of, you know, weird that me, an adult, is, like, shitting on a movie that's clearly made for little kids? Well, think about it this way. They have a horrific war scene in the middle of the movie for some reason. <laughs> Why is that in there I, if it's just for little kids? I mean, kids' movies throw the horrific shit in all the time for no reason. But there's normally, when it does that, it's normally aimed at kids and adults. Like Lion King, yeah, that's a that's a hard scene to sit through when Mufasa dies. But it still has the adult audience in mind when they're making that movie. Planes, I can't, did they really think an adult was going to, I mean, they, no, they I did. No, I mean, the, listen, the, the war scene makes no fucking sense. I'm <laughs> like, what fucking car wars are happening in the Cars universe? The Cars universe just has the shittest world building of, like, any franchise. 
I hate it so there's there's so many questions and it's like no, we're just not going to address it. We're just going to pretend nothing's wrong with this. <laughs> they fly through New York City in one of the scenes and it's like it's not like New York City is bigger to accommodate for the planes. No, like it, they're flying over it. They clearly can't fit in any of those rooms. But um but are people a thing in this world? <laughs> I, not as far as we're aware. <laughs> So it's so weird. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I, it, the thing, the bottom line is they just don't want you to think about it. But when, you know, when there's nothing else in your movie to occupy your mind, then yes, you are going to think about stuff like that. If a movie is like good or really funny, you're able to have a bit more of a, I feel like the suspense of disbelief is a way easier thing to have. They're like, they're spreading manure and I'm like, who, who, produces the manure <laughs> there are their cows are tractors there no one who who's producing the 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 manure for these crops who's eating these crops they eat gasoline don't they it, it, i will also say it is a good thing that we were we watched this last night and it is a good thing we were recording this so quick to after finishing it because i'm gonna i like i already most of this movie is out of my head um, <laughs> okay <laughs> it was just such a nothing experience yeah i th i think uh a lot of the humor is obnoxious in this movie oh yeah i i did not get a lot of laughs out of this there are there are jokes in this movie that are just structured like they're straight out of a fucking joke book. <laughs> yeah. Like, Lies like the, 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 the fucking uh, Brad Garrett fire truck, like, says, like, like he and the, uh, the, the, the sergeant's little guy who helps him. They'll just like like one of them will just say the setup to a joke and then the other will say a punchline, and it's like what this is like hee haw level humor. What are what are we doing here? Right. There more. There's more than one scene where they do a close up on a female plane's ass. <laughs> yeah. So they no, really wanted to get you in on that. There's there's some like sexy plane shots in this movie. <laughs> it's the closest thing we get to character animation, honestly. <laughs> she was all there's like there's so many planes in this like racing competition and they're all like really bland stereotypes. Yeah. Because they kind of just picked a different country. For all the ones that we focus on, at least, they just picked a different country. So it's like, okay, the Spanish one is going to wear a mask. He's going to be like a, a wrestler. But actually, he's a racer. El Chupacabra. Uh, yeah, that, that's, his, they, that's his fucking that's his, name. <laughs> that's his fucking name. They have to have a scene where he's trying to woo this, uh, what was it, the... Chinese French plane Canadian. or French Canadian? I don't remember which one was the. No, okay. There was an Asian no, plane. El I forget which one. El Chupacabra. El Chupacabra was trying to date the French Canadian plane. It was the main character right. who was interested in the in the Indian plane. Yeah. Okay. I don't know why I'm thinking. There wasn't a Chinese oh, plane, was there? I don't remember that actually. No. Uh, no. It, it was. She was Indian, not Chinese. Yeah. Well, I know the Indian one. I, that's not the one I was thinking of. I, 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 I feel, I feel like I'm remembering a setting that looked like that, but that's it. Uh, which would make sense since they're flying all around the world. But um, yeah, they're but they have like him playing like in a Spanish band for that part. Like it's just um, a, a, another thing. This film adds to the Cars universe: car Buddhism. Yeah, <laughs> Buddhism exists in the Cars universe. <laughs> Sure, why not? God, I, I think that, like, there is way too many characters, and I feel like they speed through arcs. Like, the military plane that trains him, they go through the motions of what, like, would be an entire arc for a movie within uh within 10 minutes. And it's weird, because it, it feels like they want to write those characters out and focus on all these new planes. But then when they make it to the end, they still want to have this emotional scene where he finds out that the military plane lied to him about how many missions he went on. But it's like, no, they didn't spend enough time together for that to work. Cause you really rushed their relationship growing. 
Um, there's a scene where he asks him to train him. He says no. Then a scene later, he says okay. Then he struggles for like one minute, and then it's a montage of him doing good. And then he says, I'm so proud of you. And then he's basically done until that betrayal scene. Like, it's not paced well at all. They're trying to throw way too many characters at you. Uh, and just none of it, like, has time to, like, sit and develop or be anything. It's, um... Yeah. I, it doesn't get the bare minimum done right. I, I, look, in terms, again, in terms of, like, presentation, there's nothing really that good about the presentation, but I guess it's competent enough? Like, it's not good, but it's not, like, we're not talking about, like, the Christmas tree or anything here, but even then, I think the Christmas tree is more interesting than this movie because of how bad oh, it is. Oh, I mean... Sure. <laughs> like sure, this is but this is just boring. Like there's no reaction whatsoever. And like a lot of the cases I'll say, like when we're talking about like some of these animated movies, I'll say I it was I wasn't into it, but the animation was at least like good or like fit a standard that has been set up, but I don't even think this one hits the standard. I just don't think it's the worst looking thing I've ever seen. That's, that's <laughs> I honestly, the, the Disney level animation and the Disney logo on the movie are the only things separating this from just being a straight up cars ripoff. <laughs> like, like the little cars or cargo. <laughs> like it, cause it has, it has the plot like one of those, right? Yeah. It has the uh, unbearably generic plot and the annoying comedy relief characters and, like, way too many annoying comedy relief characters. There was one character I almost liked, but then they just didn't do anything else with him, so I can't even say that. Where, like, the military plane kind of had his own assistant, like a lot of them do. And that guy was, like, playing devil's advocate for, like, like he didn't want to fly up. And the, the, the whole fucking fear of flights, that, like, heights thing doesn't make any fucking sense. He's up oh, high God. all the time. But he, he kind of plays devil's advocate, kind of ex explaining how there have been successful missions flying down low to the ground. I'm like, okay, I like that we have this character who's immediately speaking out against this guy with a bias that the film is obviously trying to speak out against. I like that there was just a character who got straight to the point with that, but they do nothing else with that character, so I can't even really... And even then, that was, like, the only character I was, like, mildly okay with, I guess is the best way to put it. It's not a great character or anything. It was just this one scene where I was like, I don't hate this guy. But the fear of heights thing is so fucking stupid because he's already so high up and it's just like, oh, a little higher. That's where the fear of heights comes in. But both of these movies have a character having a stupid, oh, uh, actually, I'm scared of this thing reveal. I think it's a little dumber in this one because just the second you say, oh, the plane has a fear of heights. It's like, fuck you. I, I, no. I have a fear of I have a fear of walking. I can do regular walking, but the second it becomes speed walking, that shit's too much. I, I I have a fear of standing up all the way. I can like hunch over a little <laughs> bit if I stand up I'm too far from the ground. I can jump on a trampoline, but not a moon bounce. <laughs> I don't I, I don't know which one would make you go higher. Probably a trampoline, actually. He's he's very specific about how how high he is willing to get off the ground. <laughs> it's so fucking you don't need it too. Like it doesn't contribute anything. It leads to him have like having the very stupid scene where he almost drowns. That's I think what it was there for. And I guess like an overcoming the fear scene at the end, but it's like neither of those were good scenes, neither of them were needed, so it's just I don't know, just fucking think before you write something. I, I get that there's, like, maybe, like, the joke is there's kind of, like, irony. It's, like, a plane who's afraid of heights. But if you want to do that, don't give it to the main character who wants to be a racer. Maybe, may you know how that joke could almost work is if it's just a side character who's a plane that literally never leaves the ground. <laughs> and maybe at the end, give him a reason to overcome the fear. It's not, like, that's not, like, great, but that's something, at least. At least then it's, like, okay, that's how the irony of a plane being afraid of heights could work, you know? You mean like the car who puts on wings so he can be a plane who appears in one scene, disappears, and then shows up at the end and he's like, you're an inspiration to all of us. <laughs> and it's like, wh who is this character? He was he was in two scenes. And he has like that second personality when he's in his flying form, but the second personality doesn't come out in the scene where he comes back. So what was the point of that? It felt like that was his character. Oh, it's like two like you know two different personalities that he has but they don't utilize that even in the scenes he's in 
Yeah, no, that's they have gone like way too far, too far past too many characters. They came up with too many characters for this movie, and and didn't know what to do with all of them. The one plane that he he's romantically interested in, which I can't believe I watched fucking scenes of planes flirting with each other. That I'm just gonna be honest. This is the first time ever in Hall of Victory's history where, in the middle of watching it, like I had food arrive, and I got up without requesting a pause. Just got up, <laughs> grabbed my food, and came back and resumed. Did not, did not pause the movie because I didn't, I didn't miss shit. I didn't miss anything doing that. That I normally have enough respect to pause it with planes. I was just like, I don't, I'm gonna be able to follow this fine if I get up for a second. <laughs> but I left right after the fucking planes flirting scene, <laughs> and I came back. And I don't, I don't know if within that, within that twenty seconds I was gone, they revealed her working with the villain or anything. But because that kind of came up at the end, where it's like, oh, you have one of his propellers. Yeah. You're working with, you're working with Sonic the Hedgehog, <laughs> and <laughs> and, she, and she's just like, uh, she cle- uh, like, oh no, I, you don't understand though. And it's like, I was like, okay, I guess this is something they set up. <laughs> I don't remember her being with him, but maybe I just wasn't paying enough attention to this. I I think we should talk about the cast just because there's so many characters. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of like big names on this too. I mean, yes and no. Yeah, like, but like some a lot some of, of them went a lot of former big names. Former big names and people who became bigger. Like there's I I, I never know how to pronounce her name. It's Priyanka Chopra. I, I know I'm saying that wrong, but she was like, she had this like popular TV show and she's like married to one of the Jonas brothers. And she's, I see her show up and stuff all the time. Now I never watch it. Cause it never looks like something I would like to see, but she's all like, I see her everywhere. Now there, Roger Craig Smith, uh, became a more popular voice actor since this. Well, so he's not, he's not a big star. Yeah, sure. But that, that's like just a voice actor. That's like an actual voice actor and not like the celebrity voices they've cast on this. Right. Like, yeah, like people like Terry Hatcher and Julia Lewis Dreyfus. How do you, why do you say Julia Louis Dreyfus. Dreyfus. Like they were bigger in like the 80s and 90s, probably. Maybe in the 90s. Yeah. Julia Louis Dreyfus was in uh, Bugs Life. Well, who'd she play in Bugs Life again? She was, uh, she, she was, uh, Ada. Princess oh. Ada. Okay, that makes sense. We got uh, Dane Cook as the main character, Dusty Crop Hopper. I'm not that familiar with Dane Cook's work. I, I, I'm looking at his movie. I, I've always heard that name, but I was always like distracted by the fact that his name is da- like similar to Dane Kevin Cook's from Stupid Mario Brothers. <laughs> I, I'm looking through his list of movies. These are all movies I have not seen. <laughs> like almost, I, I pretty much every single one of them. I've seen him in a few things, but he's not. Not a big star. This was wild to me. The fuck El Chupacabra, the Mexican plane, voiced by Carlos Alazarqui. Alazarqui? Yeah. Al- Al- Alazraki? Alazraki? I don't know. <laughs> I. One of those was hopefully close. He voices Mr. Crocker. On on fairly odd parents, I was not prepared for that. Yeah, he's uh he's Rocco. I guess he's Laszlo from Camp Laszlo. Um, he was Spyro in the original trilogy, and he was in Lightyear. And Lightyear, yeah. So he's he's made it onto the list. So was Roger Craig Smith. Uh, he was Sonic. So was Roger Craig Internet. Smith. He was Sonic. <laughs> Brad Garrett is the uh, the fire truck best friend. He was in Garfield, apparently. Hmm. I buy it. He's he was probably one of the animals, like one of the other dogs in the town. I mean, That's he's showing up. Role Brad P- Brad Garrett would play. He did a few Pixar movies. It's listing him in Finding Nemo and Ratatouille. I don't remember which characters and A Bug's Life. And I said he sounded like a character in Bug's Life, so I definitely recognize no, his he's voice. A- He's the rhinoceros beetle in A Bug's Life. And yeah. he's the puffer fish in Nemo. Okay, yeah. He, I mean, I, I think he's, he's one of the better voice he's, actors he's, in this, I feel. I think he's Chef Gaston in, in Ratatouille. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I think he did fine in this. Like, it's not a good movie, but I mean, in terms of just doing the voice, I thought he was fine. I thought Dane Cook as Dusty was honestly a little inconsistent at points. 
I don't know if that was just me, but I mean, I feel like it wasn't this. I feel like there were voice like scenes in the movie where the voice was like a lot higher and then it kind of went back down to a regular voice. And it was just like, I don't know. It wasn't that good. Val Kilmar. Val Kilmer making a return appearance. Now, like two episodes after we saw him the first time. What was the one he was in again? He was Batman in Batman Forever. In Forever. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Because I, I, I knew for a fact we just covered in him something. I just couldn't remember what it was off the top of my head. Uh, he's the plane, the military plane, right? Yeah. Makes it's sense. Top he's like, reference. Yeah. I think the character's stupid, well, but his voice is fine. Actually, hold, hold on, hold on. He's one of the military planes they meet like midway through the movie. Stacy Keach is the skipper who's like uh. training him the whole movie. Okay, I don't. I can't speak on Val Kilmar. Stacey Keach, I mean, I think the voice was fine. I think the character's stupid, but the voice is fine. I, I like most of the voices in this movie are fine. Like, I can't really, I can't really say it's not good voice acting. Like they, they, well, like what did they have to work with? They, they came up with a, a cartoonish voice for the planes to have. They, they did their job, I guess. What did you think of John Cleese as Bulldog, the British plane? Who tells Rusty, like, oh, every plane for himself. But then he gets blinded and Rusty helps him. And he's like, why? Oh, you saved my life. Why would they bring John Cleese on for this and, like, not give him any jokes? (laughs) Because that character doesn't have, like, he has an arc that's settled in one scene. And I get it. He's not really there to be a character. He's there to let Dusty be a character. (laughs) Like... I don't know, there was nothing really that memorable about him. He's an asshole in one scene, and then he stops being an asshole in the next scene. He was lame. I like John Cleese a lot, but he was lame in this. Yeah, no, J- John Cleese is definitely, like... Like, the closer we get to the present, his presence in an animated movie is not... usually a sign of quality. No. Sinbad? Sinbad is in this? I can't believe... Planes is the first Sinbad movie we watched. <laughs> who did Sinbad voice? He he was the guy who just like any time Dusty showed up was like, "You're stinky. You smell bad. You, you got yeah. your crop duster stink. You stink really bad, man." Yeah, that was stupid. I don't even see him on the fucking listen. It says Larry the Cable Guy is credited as Mater. Was Mater in this? I don't remember seeing Mater. I didn't see Mater in this. Was there a post credit scene we skipped? He's not listed on Letterboxd, I'll tell you that much. Alright, well, I'm gonna just assume that's bullshit then. Because I didn't see Mater. Uh, Rob Paulson did some additional voices. It doesn't it just says additional voices. That's, there's that, yeah. Anyone else specific you want to bring up? No. Isn't, like, Gabriel... However you pronounce oh, that. Gabriel Iglesias? Isn't he kind of like a controversial comedian? Uh, I don't like people... think so. He's not especially popular. Might not be controversial. It might just be people say he's not funny. That's not really the same thing. Let me look. Yeah, was he the one no, that's... I, I... Yeah, he was the one that South Park made fun of in the Fish Sticks episode. If you if you know what I'm talking about with that. All right. I, I believe that. <laughs> He he voiced uh, Speedy Gonzalez in Space Jam 2, so this is his return appearance. Okay, yeah, shit. Because I was going to say, he seems like someone who could be on this show a couple of times, if he if he's done a lot of movies. Like, he was in The Nut Job 2, he was in Norm of the North, he was in Show Dogs, uh, he was in The Star. <laughs> he, was, he was, yeah, I mean, he absolutely could come, come on here and knock some of these out. He was in Smurfs, The Lost Village. He was in the second Planes movie too, which makes sense. Oh, he's in the first Nut Job too. He was, he was, he was, he got, he landed both. He was in Ugly Dolls. He was in Fernanded. The the fact that there's a second one of these, like I can't even <laughs> imagine. Like let let me just say this. I I think Cars Three might be the worst Pixar movie. This is worse than Cars Three. It's worse than Cars Two. It's it's worse than any of the Cars movies, honestly. I think I can do uh, take it a step further than you. I have it ranked second to last on all the Hall of Victories we've covered so far, which might, again, might seem like really harsh to do to a kid's movie, but I gotta say, it's just like, 
I don't think anyone wanted to I, make this. I don't think anyone <laughs> wanted to do this movie. I think it was no, something that the studio no, asked I, them to do, so they had to do it. No, yeah, I, I don't think anyone's heart was in this one. I don't have it quite as low as you. I don't think I hated it as much as you did, but I still have it in, like, the bottom ten. This is trash. I, I was, oh, like, surprised awful. at how bad this was. Like, I had no... I had zero expectations, and I was still let down. Yeah, I mean, if you grew up with this one, and it has, like, a soft... You know, you have a soft spot for it because of that. That's all fine and dandy. I just can't look at this as a movie that, like, had any soul behind it. And I honestly, for that reason, it was tempted to put it underneath The Last Airbender. But I do think, that like, the mistakes The Last Airbender made are, like, some of the most atrocious mistakes ever made in a movie. So I still gotta give it to The Last Airbender as the worst one, but I do think this is worse than joysticks. Cause, and I, it's again, it's a weird thing to compare at joysticks. I could imagine there were people making that movie that had fun with it, even though I find it annoying, even though I hate it, I could at the very least say maybe someone working on it was having a good time making it. Um, where if planes, I just feel like it's a waste of everyone's time. I think it's a waste of time to the people who watched it. I think it's a waste of the time who lended their talents to it. It's, it just it's not something that needed to exist in any shape or form and i'm not even sure if it is that good of a movie to show kids they you could you could find something better for them cars is a better example of something you could show a kid than this yes yeah no i'm with you i this this exists here's the thing cars 2 and 3 absolutely only exist to sell toys right like, you can make an argument for most of the Pixar sequels. Cars 2 and 3 exist to sell toys. It's the reason there's more Cars sequels than anything except Toy Story. Right. <laughs> but this this unambiguously only exists for toys. Like, there was no attempt to add on to the Cars franchise. This is just, we are selling more toys. Right, right. God, I... I s I said that last time. I said that Cars and Toy Story are the only ones with more than one sequel. And in the time since that episode has come out, they have announced Incredibles 3. So, yeah, uh, that, that like immediately became inaccurate. I mean, I guess it's still accurate for a couple more years until that comes out. But it's, it has now been announced that they're making Incredibles 3. What do you think about Incredibles 3? Because I think it could be redemption for the second one, but I kind of doubt it. I have my doubts. I mean, it could be, but they'd have to, like... They'd have to change a lot about their approach. And was I, am I mistaken? Was Incredibles 2 a hit? Because if it was a hit, even though there's criticism against it, that's not really going to matter to them. I it made money. I don't think I don't think they had a really big flop until our next film, The Lightyear. But uh, right, I just yeah, I, I don't know. Like uh, Incredibles three, I'm open to. I didn't even hate the second one. I just think it's kind of. I just I just found the whole thing I, really underwhelming. the The only thing that gives me hope is that Inside Out two was actually good. Yeah, if Inside Out two was was not as good as it is, I would be like, yeah, no, Incredibles three is gonna suck. But I I think there's a chance there's a chance they make a good Incredibles three. I have my doubts though. Incredibles three, I feel like they should just do what they never did with the second one and age everyone up. But since they didn't do that in the second one, I don't have a lot of hope for that. But there's ways to make an Incredibles sequel work, and I yeah I don't think that they I don't think they did it very well. But I like I don't dislike Incredibles two as much as I dislike Toy Story four or. Shit, I'm trying to think if I even watched any of the other Disney sequels. Because, I mean, I really never... I never watched the Cars sequels. I never watched Finding Dory. I I think Incredibles 2 is better than the two Cars sequels. But it's pretty much worse than everything else, I think. Mm-hmm. It's, uh... It's not it's not as good as Monsters University. Not as good as Finding Dory. Oh, I like Monsters University. Yeah. I'm a defender of that one. I like Monsters University. I think, like, most of Pixar's sequels are end up in this kind of, like, it was okay realm. Yeah. In Incredibles, like, apart from the Cars sequels, Incredibles 2, I think, is probably the weakest. 
I don't think Toy Story 4 is like that bad. I think it even opens really strong. I just don't. It's just kind of. I just don't think there's much. It, yeah, much it, to it. it. Feels, it's just rep- it's too repetitive. I think it's just like you kind of get it. It feels so much smaller scale than two and three mm-hmm. because because they pick the one tiny loose thread that three left and they focus on that. And that's a good decision. I'm glad they focused on Woody and Bo Peep. But, like, a, because they chose to focus on this really small thing, it leaves the film feeling kind of small and inessential compared to the others. Right. And, like, most of the characters have nothing to do with that movie. Like, a part, like Buzz has kind of a story... And Woody is the main character, and otherwise the other characters don't do anything. Speaking of Toy Story, let's talk about its spinoff. The 2022 film Lightyear. In this story, Buzz Lightyear of Star Command lands on a hostile planet full of killer vines and evil bugs. Uh, And he's trying to launch the ship, get it out of there... Uh, uh, so it escaped the deadly planet, but he, he doesn't pull up quite fast enough and he hits the side of a, a cliff and the, the ship is down, the, the hyperdrive is damaged and they have to set up camp on this new planet and try to figure out how to make hyperspace travel work again. So then we get a sequence of Buzz doing this, and because Buzz is doing this, as he's traveling in hyperspace, time is still passing on the planet, but it feels like, you know, only like an hour or so has passed to him. So he keeps coming back, and it'll be like four years later, eight years later, whatever. And slowly he just watches all of his friends get super old and die off. And then one day when he finally, finally he discovers how to fix the hyperspeed, uh, he returns and finds the planet under attack by the evil Emperor Zerg. And from that point on, it's a, a, a mission to, you know, defeat Zerg and, and return the uh, hyperspace crystal to the ship that it, it, it needs to power to get back to wherever they were going. Along with this, like, ragtag team of rookies he's got tagging along through the adventure. Michael, what'd you think of Lightyear? It's fucking insane where they tried to take (laughs) that story for Buzz Lightyear. (laughs) Because it's just such a dark and sad story. When we were watching, I kept uh, comparing it to the movie Interstellar because it has a very similar story. Very different execution, obviously, but a very similar story about, like, going on a mission um, and, like, missing the life of someone that you cared about as a result. Yeah. I think it's insane that they did that. I think it's kind of interesting to see Pixar take on a story like that, but Buzz Lightyear is not the character to do it with. And saying that, opening the movie, saying this is Andy's favorite movie, this is the movie that made him love Buzz Lightyear, it's like, I actually think that's, like, the worst thing they could have done. I think that's the... <laughs> as much as, like, as other... There is a lot to talk about with this movie, but with that, that is, like, the number one thing that bothers me about it. Yeah, no, th- that's not canon. This is, at best, a shitty remake of Buzz Lightyear of Star Command. <laughs> yeah. Say what you will about the original Buzz Lightyear of Star Command. It at least feels like a movie a child would want a toy from. This, I can't imagine a child wanting a toy from this movie. Plus, plus, if Buzz, if our Buzz from the Toy Story movies is supposed to be acting like this dude, he's doing a bad job because the two are really nothing alike. Mm Mm-hmm. They say some of the same lines. That's, that's about it. And it's not even really Buzz Lightyear quotes as much as it is Toy Story quotes, you know? (laughs) Yeah. They're not, like, taking t- stuff from the old TV show. They're taking stuff from Toy Story, which I get why they're doing that. That's the more recognizable thing. That's the thing that people can point at the screen and say, I remember that, but... there, There's even inconsistencies with the toy. Like, the toy has all... The big red button on his suit has always activated the wings. But they changed that in this movie. The big red button is actually an emergency lever that, like, inflates an inflatable suit... 
And uh, the wings were a thing that only happened when he ejected from his spaceship. Yeah. <laughs> I, it, it's just... I don't know. Like, doing, doing like, a modern, dark, gritty Buzz Lightyear spinoff and then trying to claim it as the thing that Andy was watching in 1995, it just doesn't work. Yeah, they're like, they're trying to go for a pretty deep story, but it's... It's rough because, again, it's like this interstellar-esque story, but it's borrowing from other stories, too, other sci-fis as well. Like the whole yeah. reveal that the main villain is you in the future. That's been done before, but that's been done not in a Pixar movie targeted at fans of Buzz Lightyear. And, I mean, th those opening 20 minutes are so bizarre. Because after them, after he comes back to the planet and Zerg is attacking... From there on out, it's a pretty standard sci-fi affair. It's nothing gets... The the twist is a little weird. We'll get to the twist. But, like... It's a horrible idea. Uh, other than that, it's a pretty straightforward movie. But it has this, like, awkward 20-minute opening where he watches his friend get old and die. <laughs> it's like... What, yeah. What is the... It, it kills the pacing. <laughs> Like, it, it should be way, way shorter. He Like, we, we were joking about him getting it right on the first try. He maybe should have gotten it right on the first try and then came back, you know, to Zerg already attacking, you know? Yeah, the, that was kind of weird, because maybe it would mean more, like, if it was something that was out of his control, like, he made it back in more than four years had passed. Like, his friend isn't dead, but she is elderly now and she do it like probably doesn't have a lot more time left i think that could have like a bigger punch because it feels like you're taking all the control from him but no he deliberately kept going away from four for four years at a time and then act surprised that she was dead when he got back like that was like after what attempt number 10 11 12 like of course that was gonna happen yeah it's 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 weird from a story perspective it's weird from a pacing perspective it's, I, I, I don't know why this is how you decided to open your Buzz Lightyear movie. Uh, do we need to talk? Let's talk about the twist. Let's talk about the fucking twist. It's stupid. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you go ahead. See, this is, this is like the one thing I had kind of heard about the movie before I watched it was that Zerg is Buzz from the future He's created a time machine, but he can only go back this far because his crystal's broken. He needs the new crystal from Buzz to to activate it. But he, he wants to go back and, like, fix things so he can finish the mission. But then our Buzz is like, oh, but if you do that, our friend, she won't live the happy life that she always wanted. And he's like, uh, too bad, I'm finishing the fucking mission. It's it's sort of a weird, like, untwist, retwist villain. Because, like, there's the twist reveal that, like, oh, actually, it's Buzz, and he's not, like, here to hurt our Buzz. He just wants a crystal from him. But then it's like, ah, no, but he is evil. Yeah. I don't think anyone who enjoyed Buzz Lightyear, Zerg wanted that to be what Zerg was. I also don't think Zerg looks as good in this movie. There's aspects of the design that I think are kind of cool. Like, I think it's kind of cool how big they made Zerg in this. But, like, I mean, even shit like removing the cape. Like, I get it's a more dramatic story, but like, why was this a more dramatic story? Why wasn't this just something campy and fun? Like... <laughs> yeah, no, I that's that's what I was saying about, like, this being such, like, a modern, gritty reboot thing. Yeah, like, Zerg is kind of a fun design. He's kind of a fun character. Why? <laughs> Why did they? I don't know. I'm at a loss. I'm, I, 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 I was at a loss for words when I heard that, like, reveal. I knew the reveal was coming, too. But. I, it's, it's just, I, I don't know why you would make any of this movie, honestly. Like, at no point do the decisions they made making this movie make any sort of sense. No. It's, it's fucking <sighs> nonsense. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'll, I'll give it, like, credit in some areas. I mean, um, it looks fine. Although I would actually say that some of it, like, the planet Theron doesn't, like, it's not that interesting. It's, like, everything looks fine. The lighting is good. You know, the character 
characters are animated well, uh, textures look pretty, you know, pretty fantastic. It's Pixar, they're, that's, that's standard. But I wouldn't say the environment that we're spending most of the movie in is really, like, one that I want to explore more, one that I'm, like, that interested in. It is kind of boring. It's it's super generic sci-fi aesthetic in this. Like, I I I was joking with you that his room in this movie looks like the rooms from the Star Wars hotel. Oh yeah. <laughs> like it's just it's just kinda like that generic Star Warsy look. Right. Like this could have just been a Star Wars movie. Why wasn't this just a Star Wars movie? Why did you have to drag Buzz Lightyear into this? I've I, I've already given up on on Star Wars. You've already turned that one that that brand into complete mush. Leave Buzz Lightyear out of this, please. <laughs> you know they just gonna make the next Star Wars movie where it turns out the uh, Luke Luke Skywalker was actually Darth Vader the whole time. Yeah, that's what that dream sequence in uh, episode 5 meant. I, I I can only imagine good things coming from that choice. Like, I, that'd be the decision that, like, really won everyone back over. And Star Wars fans would be at peace again. Yeah, but no, they had to waste it on Buzz Lightyear. Yeah. You, you could have had it all, Disney. <laughs> let's Let's talk about the people in this movie. Uh, yeah, so Chris Evans replacing Tim Allen was definitely... A controversial choice. Um, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I. I feel like they should have just put in Tim Allen. I. It, it's not like something I, that got me like worked up though. I, I. Yeah, I think Tim Allen probably would have been better, but like Chris Evans is fine. Yeah. Um. I've got no major complaints with that, even though I. I kind of understand why so many people were bothered by it because I mean that's what the toys' voice is. Why wouldn't the toys' voice just match the character? Yeah. But at the same time, it's also just like, it, it's, <laughs> <Who cares? laughs> I mean, there's it's nothing some... that, like, there's nothing all that memorable about, I mean, no, nothing all that memorable about the voice he does, but I guess it's fine. Like, I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it, it could have just been Tim Allen, but like, whatever, who cares? <laughs> if it was like, uh, I think it just kind of goes into the same problem that a lot of these movies have, you know? Yeah. Like, it's just, like, the film having more of a campy feel to it would have been something that was accomplished through Tim Allen voicing the character instead of uh, Chris Evans. At the same time, we're already so far gone from what that would have been to where it's, like, Chris Evans is the least of the problems, so... <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Like, this movie still would have sucked if it had Tim Allen in it, let's be yeah. clear. Kiki Palmer is the, the the his his friend's granddaughter who who dreams of being a, a space ranger, even though she's scared of space. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, you mentioned that there was another weird phobia in this one. <laughs> I forgot what the one in Lightyear was. Uh. Yeah. Sure. I mean, kind of point. It's pointless just because you know how they're gonna deal with it. There's just going to be a scene where she has to actually act, do something in space. She's going to live through it and she's going to be fine. Like, I don't know if you gay, if you maybe focused on a stronger reason for her being afraid of space or you add a little bit of nuance to how she deals with it. I don't know. Maybe you could, maybe that could be something, but it's just kind of, it's just kind of a seed they're planting yeah. for a scene that's been done a million times. So it's not yeah, a very no, interesting I... character trait. Her being scared of space is, like, nothing. It's not as it's, stupid as a plane being afraid of heights. No, yeah, <laughs> I'll say yeah, that. it's not, it's not <laughs> as stupid. I don't know, like, fear is something that can be a very interesting trait of a character. But, I don't know, you gotta, like, it's gotta serve more of a purpose than plot beat, you know? She, I guess she was fine voice acting-wise. I can't really recall any voices in this movie where I was just like, oh, this, this sucked. Maybe... I wasn't that into Taika Waititi's character, to be honest. Like, that's the only one I can think of, maybe. But I'm honestly realizing how much I am not a fan of him as as an actor. <laughs> he was great in Jojo Rabbit. <laughs> I liked him in that a lot. But, like, there's this, there's, what was it, Free Guy? You know, people people don't really like Taika Waititi as an actor, weirdly. Yeah. I'm, and I'm... I, I, I kind of understand why. I like him in most of his own films. But yeah. like the second he's in someone else, he was fine in this. 
I did not hate him in this. I didn't hate him. I just don't think his character is like comic relief. And I fit, don't think he managed to get a single laugh in. No, there were laughs in this movie, but I, I really don't think he was one of them. I think the funniest character was the cat. And I don't even think the cat was that good, but the uh, the cat had kind of a funny delivery. I, I, I liked the cat. The cat was pretty funny. I, that's not really the voice actor's fault. It's just, he has a cute design and mm-hmm. they gave him some stuff to do that was fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was definitely the best part, I would say. Uh, the old woman who's a criminal. I mean, it, that's some, I mean, that's an idea that can be funny, but it also can just be like, you have to get, you have to write them funny lines too. It can't just be like, yeah, it, it can't just be like, it, like hoodwinked. Oh, my grandma like, does is- action sports. This is a potentially funny joke, but I, or a potentially funny character, I should say, but she, she doesn't get utilized to her full potential, I don't think. And it's because this movie's very bland and safe. Yeah. Apart from that opening. The, there's way too many properties out there, and it's always like some of the worst movies we talk about that just think Epic Granny is enough for it to be funny. Like, fucking Space Jam 2 did that, too. Where it's like, no, you gotta, you gotta write them, you gotta write some funny lines for them still. Like, you, making a grandma that, like, making a character not follow a stereotype and act the opposite way of what you're used to can be funny, but it can't be funny just because you're doing that. Like, that, there, you do have to write something good for them. Like, going against a stereotype or a norm leads to potential for jokes it's not a joke in itself yeah um at least not a good joke in itself i don't think so yeah yeah the the trio just i also think those three are introduced a little too late into the movie well i mean yeah that's what i'm saying with the opening 20 minutes being like what it is yeah (laughs) because it feels it feels like after that 20 minutes then we get a normal hour and a half long movie right like it feel it feels like that opening twenty minutes should have been a scene or two, and instead it's a quarter of the movie. Right. And you're like, what? Why are we just getting to this now? This seems important. This is what the movie <laughs> is about. Why did it take us half an hour to get here? <laughs> Bill Hader's back. He is. Uh, Featherin Hamstan. Who is that again? The, the the rookie from the beginning and the Joker's oh. his last name is like impossible to pronounce. Yeah, that character wasn't very good. That opening scene is like the worst that, part of the movie. That opening scene sucked. Oh my god, the humor was not funny. No. That was the least funny part of the movie. <laughs> oh, is this Hater's second time on the show or third? Second, I believe. I think you're right. He was also in um Ralph breaks the internet. Uncredited. Hey, if an actor requests to not be credited in the movie, can they be spared? <laughs> uh. <laughs> it has to be because they didn't want to be credited. It can't be because the studio just randomly decided not to credit someone. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> he, he can, we'll, we'll give him an Alan Smithy credit for that one. <laughs> oh. Efren Ramirez was in this, and I'm like, oh, he's a returning actor. I'm wrong. He was in the Crank movies, which we did on Hollow Victories Out of the Ring. He has yeah. not been in anything we've watched for the show. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I have anything else to say about Lightyear. Yeah, I guess at the end of the day, it's like, not as bad as I thought it was going to be, but... I, I don't think it is Pixar's worst movie. It shouldn't exist. It shouldn't be a Buzz Lightyear movie, certainly. Yeah, I got. I don't have much else to say about this. It's look. It's not. I. I, I feel like I. It's another episode where I've made my stance very clear on which one I'm voting for. But it. After watching something like Planes, you can appreciate a few things about Lightyear, because it really isn't like the worst. I. I do think it's interesting that they tried such a dark story, even though I don't agree with the choice. I'm just kind of like amazed by it you know it's like why did you do that pixar (laughs) what made that what made you make that decision yeah i I, i'm with you planes is like abysmal light year it's it's nothing it's terrible but it's it's a lot better than planes there are jokes i laughed at there are sequences i enjoyed i i dare say 
they keep things rolling along pretty nicely in light year it never it never feels like maybe apart from the beginning it never feels like we're hanging out in one place too long so right, yeah right. I, I mean uh, light year is the infinitely better movie hey can we talk about can we talk about how Buzz Lightyear doesn't say to infinity and beyond in this movie? Yeah, it's a thing he that. does with his friend. He says to infinity and she says and beyond. That's not Buzz Light. You fucked it up. That's not Buzz Lightyear. That's supposed yeah. to be the thing he says. He says that. It's not <laughs> something he says with his partner. It's something he says. Yeah. Yeah, I kept waiting for him to say it. I felt like he might still say it by himself, despite that. Like, oh, they're saving it for the end, but no, they don't. They don't, and I don't really care. But yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, it's dumb. <laughs> I was, yeah, I will say it's dumb, but whatever. I, this movie's it, full it of feels, decisions like that. Yeah, no, it's it's the type of thing where like you do an adaptation of something, and you're trying to be really clever with the adaptation, except it doesn't work because this is supposed to be the original thing. And not just, like, a spinoff based on an old thing. I mean, right. it is. It is a spinoff based on an old thing. But it's supposed to be the original thing in the lore. I will say, this movie, it only has, like, normal, like, white text on a black background to explain that this is the, the movie Buzz Lightyear is from. Buzz Lightyear is Star Command. They animated in the Toy Story characters watching it. So, uh, that's why I believe that one is canon, and this one is yeah. not. This yeah. is an in-universe shitty remake. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, I think that's fair. Um, I think they I'm trying have, to say it. They have surprisingly similar plots. The, the <laughs> Buzz Lightyear Star Command movie is about him teaming up with, like, three rookies who are not very good at their job. So, uh, the audience is against us. Yeah, um, they you have told they me. have overwhelmingly voted for planes, and all of the comments are in favor of planes. They're all <laughs> planes, and it's not even a question. Planes wasn't an insult to me as a Toy Story and Buzz Lightyear fan, and didn't insult my intelligence. That's uh, if you wouldn't say that if you had seen planes, but sure, no, I the, the, the Lightyear is definitely better than planes. We're we're giving it to Lightyear. I, I guess I understand how one would be more offensive than the other, where Lightyear is, like, taking this very sure. popular character in this very popular franchise. War of Cars, it's not nearly as beloved, um, and it, and it already kind of spoiled itself with the sequels. And then Planes doesn't do anything with the characters from Cars, so even if there is a really hardcore Cars fan, like... Planes isn't going to do anything to ruin cars. I don't yeah. think this does anything to ruin Toy Story. I just think it's like, yeah, no, this is, you can't, it's not one of those things where it's like, oh, they retconned it to make this Andy's favorite movie. No, it's just not true. They're saying it's true, but it's not true. It doesn't make any sense that a no. fucking eight-year-old would go and see this and it'd be his favorite movie. That is so fucking stupid. It was just done for marketability and it's dumb. It, no, there's like no... No, it's this is not Andy's favorite movie. No one is buying that. Um, I get why people would dislike Lightyear more in that regard, but no, I mean, there was a lot more to get out of Lightyear than Planes, and I wouldn't even say there was a lot to get out of Lightyear, but there was something. Yeah, yeah. All right, so next month, it's, it's Halloween, and Woo. we're going to talk about the scariest thing I can think of. Controversial YouTubers. Ooh. Two horror movies from the same director. So I believe this is the first matchup we are doing where both movies are from one director. Two hmm. movies, same director, both starring controversial YouTube figures. <laughs> it's Shane Dawson in <laughs> Smiley from 2012 versus Logan Paul in The Thinning from 2016. Is The Thinning a horror movie? Uh, Post-apocalyptic. I Close All enough. Right. All <laughs> Who right. gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> That's the last time I call it the, the correct title. I will be calling it the widely accepted real name of the film, The Thinning, from here on out. <laughs> the only thing I know about The Thinning is Quentin Review's old video on it. <laughs> 
And that's all you need to know. Yep. That one... That one is a YouTube Red exclusive. Still, We're have to... I do have I, I have YouTube Premium. I like its mu- I like YouTube Music, so I can watch it. For... Mitzi has YouTube Premium, so I'm gonna have to watch it on their channel, <laughs> on their account rather. All right, that's our Halloween uh, episode for the year. Until next time, for my co-host Michael Shudakel, I am Matt Presents. We will see you in the next one. Peace.